Well guys, we made it back to the mobile home again today. This is our project house. We are completely rebuilding this old mobile home for what? <laughs> investment? Because we have cool plans for it and it's a good investment property. So right here is the back end of the home and this used to be the master bedroom. And you can see it has one window in this whole back area which is kind of a shame because we got three walls touching the outside. So we thought it'd be beneficial to add another window and at least take advantage of these exterior walls that are back here. So that's what we're gonna do is mirror this window over here and have windows on the front and the back of the home, have a better view, more light. Now we just got done installing another window on the other end of the home and we had the same situation with these two by three studs when we bought this house, we had no idea it was framed with two by threes. I thought it would have been a two by four constru construction. Some things like that, you can't know until you start tearing into the walls and seeing what you have to work with. So it's not a big deal. I would have preferred a two by four wall, but we can work with this. And I don't wanna cut all these studs out and rework everything. And actually we're out of studs right now. So we're gonna make use of this framing. So let's start by marking and cutting out this center opening. Well guys, this is getting kind of annoying. I think I might pull this insulation down soon, but <laughs> I just went on the outside of the house and unscrewed the siding from this. I think it can come out. Let's give it a shot. Give it a try. There's always a few staples at the very top here. I got some lines marked out of where this needs to be cut. Luckily, we have a natural break in the siding right here. So it's gonna make it a lot easier to cut this out. I'll just go outside and start doing it.
I'm going to take it in with you. Now we just cut some one by two strips that we're going to be gluing and screwing right here. And the whole concept is to build out this stud so that the siding can press flat against it like that. There's no gaps and we can screw the window into it. Now, because this is holding the window, this has to be very strong. That's why I'm going to put a load of glue on it, wood glue and screws so that it becomes one piece of wood. So I'm going to do this all the way around the window. I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, progress being made. I just cut some studs to put under here. Okay guys, one more piece to put in. Top piece going across. And then I think we're gonna be ready to install that window. So now we're just gonna get the metal tidied up. We're gonna clean the edges off so there's no grime. Let me show you something. This is the siding that we cut out of that window opening. Look how nasty that is. I mean, it is filthy. So what I like to do is just rub around the edges. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean with the butyl tape that we use. I just rub it with my glove. Most of it flakes off, brushes off, it gets pretty clean, and then we're ready. So let me just get all that done. We don't like to be repetitious and this is window number six that we are installing now and six times now we've shown putting butyl tape on the windows. And the reason we do that is because not only is it just part of the process, but there's new people joining us every day, new people finding these videos every day. And even though we did five windows before this, this might be the first one they caught. So we want to make sure we're showing at least a general overview of what's going on so they know why and how the window isn't going to leak. And we prevent leaks by applying butyl tape sealant around the flange. It's just a sealant putty that will keep the water out, hopefully. On these aluminum windows, I did find a weak spot in the sill where leaks are potential to happen and probably will happen. So I did add Lexel caulk to the bottom of the window and the screws that hold it together to help seal it and prevent future leaks. We have a neighbor who's mowing. We always have something noisy going on over here, so I hope it's not too loud, but we are ready to install the window, right? Are we ready? I think we're ready. Good. This metal might be... Alright. Alright. That's probably as good as it's gonna get. It looks good on the bottom? It's flat.
now I need the ladder. I'll be back. Unless I can sit on your shoulders. No! I have the right angle tool. I don't even know what it is. Just leaves. Yeah. Well, I was thinking more of the line of falling off the ladder. Mm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Don't break the glass. Something didn't go right with this one. I'm going to redo it. It went downward and it didn't grab. I don't know if my header is in the wrong spot. Well, here's the new window, fully installed. I think I made a slight mistake that nobody would ever see, but I just realized that I made my sill an eighth of an inch lower than the rest of the windows. I was thinking it was 20 and a half, but it was actually supposed to be 20 and 5 eighths. So it gave me an extra eighth inch at the top of the window, which is why I was, I was having a little bit of trouble getting my screws to go in to the header properly, but, but it's okay. It's an eighth inch. It won't hurt anything. I'm not redoing it. And it's amazing how tight the tolerances for those mobile home windows are. Like the screws, they, I mean, you gotta be dead on. They don't give you like almost hardly any room around the window for movement. That eighth of an inch off is all it took to make it hard to screw in because I was catching the bottom of the stud. But here is the new view from where we started with now two windows, a lot better, a lot more symmetrical. And a lot more light coming from both directions. I like this. Me too. And now as we come down to the front end of the mobile home, we can see the entire length of the home. I don't know. I think the windows are evenly spaced, light coming in in all the proper places. That was the last of these windows. And now I've been held up for a while because I wanted to put in a new bathroom window. And it's not a secret because when you guys see it, you're going to know it's a bathroom window because of the size. What's been holding me up is that I was having trouble, first of all, deciding on what window and if I wanted a window, but also finding the window. I found it difficult to find a small mini bathroom window with obscure glass in the bronze color that would match the other windows. I could find a, a lot of small windows in white and in aluminum finish, just mill aluminum and I really wanted to stick with the bronze. I couldn't find it locally, even at our mobile home store. So what I did was I searched online and I finally found a window that I think will work and I ordered it. Luckily, I was able to order one online and it's just a little baby window. And the only thing is I couldn't get it in obscure glass, so it's a clear window. So we'll have to be creative and just find a way to give privacy to the bathroom. But I just want light in the bathroom. That's always important to me. I'm not gonna show you where it's going yet because we're not gonna reveal our master layout and I don't want you guys to know where the bathroom will be, but we will be adding one more window when it comes and we still have to work on this one. So this bay window we always thought was pretty cool. It looked like it was in pretty rough shape, but after talking to the mobile home guys and looking around, I realized that we are not able to get a replacement for this we would have to get something totally different and it's gonna be very hard to find a bay window. I'd have to find like straight windows. We decided we're gonna keep this. We're gonna keep it and restore this whole set of windows exactly as it is. So if we look down here at the sill, the first thing we'll see is a bumblebee, is a rotted sill. This whole sill, it's not too rotted, it's just decayed because it was made out of fiberboard and it looks worse than it was because I was trying to pry it out when we were doing demolition and I just couldn't get it to come out, but I'm gonna keep working on that. And you could also see a broken window here and it's pretty cruddy and dirty. And also up here, this is plastic. They have it duct taped to the outside because this glass is also missing and broken. Now, aside from these being broken, the rest of them actually look like they're in pretty good shape. So here's the broken window from the outside. Uh, this is so that the rose bush can grow indoors and beautify the house. <laughs> and you can see that nasty plastic window here. I'm not gonna open that yet because I don't want all the birds running in the house and 
making a mess, whatever they do. But what we can try to do is get this sill out and see if we can get the bottom at least restored. I already took the screws out of this window. You can see all around the bottom, the screws are taken out. So this is underneath the window sill and the aluminum is totally corroded. See all this white corrosion? Uh, there's holes eaten right through the aluminum. So if we can just get this all apart, I gotta see what we're working with here, but I did take the screws out of this as well. And everything's just held together with old tacky tape and probably some staples and stuff on the inside. So I'm going to see if we can just get this sill out. And I know it's scary to leave this window floating, but we got to start somewhere. So I don't think this sill supports the window. I think it's hanging from the house, from the top. Because look at this is really loose now. Ready to just pound, hit this with your hammer. I was trying to, see I'm bending the frame. Well the thing is that I think the aluminum is what's holding it down here. Yeah, that was tight. The wall looks perfect. No rock at all. Well guys, we finally got it out and that feels good because I was trying to get this out months ago when we demoed this place. And I couldn't get it to budge. You saw how tight it was in there. Yep. Cutting it in half definitely helped yank it out. And now we can see what we're working with and what we need to replace this area. I also noticed a lot of heavy corrosion on the bottom of the window. It's like eating through the aluminum window. And I don't know what would cause that because usually you don't see that unless there's some kind of reaction, chemical or electrical, where there's two metals, dissimilar metals touching, but I have no idea what was going on there. But hopefully we can get rid of all the corroded parts, brush it off and seal it so it doesn't keep spreading. But so far what I'm seeing is good, that, I, that this window is salvageable. So I'm gonna take some measurements. We're gonna run to the store and see if we can get a new piece of wood here. Instead of fiberboard, we're gonna try to get solid wood of some kind and build a brand new sill. Let's also pop these screens out. We're going to pick up some new screens so we can redo those, put some new screen material in. And shop for glass. We got a lot of things we got to make a list for. These screens aren't bad, they're just worn out. I think it would help to refresh them. I don't know if I'm going to rescreen these or rebuild them with fresh. I would say just rescreen them. Now I'm just trying to get this glazing bead out. This is like a plastic trim that holds the glass in place. The problem is that the scraper is just a little bit too fat. Too thick. Yep. This might be the one I need. There it is. And if we can get these tracks out, 
we'll be able to measure exactly where the glass ends. Get a good accurate measurement. I don't want to open this up, but I feel like I have to see and get a measurement for this side. One, two. Yeah, it goes over more. Yeah. So we got our measurements. We have our shopping list. It might take some time to source everything that we need to finish this window, but we can start on that and that'll get us heading in the right direction. I'll try to pick up some bronze spray paint and see if we can freshen up the outside and make it crisp again. And I think that's it. We're gonna clean up and call it a day. And here is that bottom flashing that we pulled off that was underneath that window. I mean, so that's my cut that I made when I was trying to get it out, but look how corroded it is. I mean, the whole thing is trashed. So I'm gonna bring this piece home with me and even though it's a mess, it's a good template. And I'm gonna buy some new metal and try to get this shaped. I'll bring it out with us so that we can have it all ready to go. So it was, a, it was another successful day. Yep. Got another window in. Progress made. We're gonna go home, start planning the next phase of this renovation. We have so much to do and we're just trying to stay focused on point. Yeah. So. Um, like I said, we're working on that window, but that might not come next because we have to find the materials to repair, repair it. So hopefully I'm thinking we're going to get inside and start fixing some of those sagging trusses. Mm -hmm. So maybe next time we'll be working on that. But I guess that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. Bye.